Hi and welcome back to another watercolor painting video. Today I will create some cone flowers and I painted these during summer and it was a very popular post on Instagram and so I thought you might be interested in seeing a tutorial. I'm sketching out the flowers using the Derwent Inktense pencils as well as the Derwent Graphite Tint. The graphite tint are um, similar to the Inktense pencils, they are water soluble, but they are colorized or colored graphite. So it's a bit um, kind more of a muted color. But that's finally not important for the flowers. I just picked the colors because um, they were next to me and I had them. So you can use any other water soluble pencil for that. I recommend always using a reference photo so it makes it much easier to sketch out the flowers and when you're sketching the flowers keep your pencil right at the end and make everything very loose. Don't go for the exact shape, just for the approximate shape that makes the painting much more interesting and it's also a lot easier. When you start um, redrawing something in the exact same way and you make a mistake, then everything starts looking strange. When you start by just sketching and focusing on the expression of the, um, of the composition, then um, you will always have a nice result. Composition is always something that is important if a painting looks interesting or if it doesn't or if it's pleasant to the eyes or if not. I recommend taking a class on composition. There are so many tutorials out there. I believe you will find a lot on YouTube and I also can recommend trying out Skillshare. Also for watercolor, Skillshare is a really great platform. You can check my um, description and I have a link for, I believe it's a two weeks free trail, so you can just check Skillshare out and try it. After sketching out the flowers, I'm going in with my watercolors and I'm starting with a purple color. It's a pastel color from St. Petersburg, the White Knights. And I just start and as always, I keep some white areas. Don't put the color everywhere. As every watercolor video I'm painting here in real time for you so you can maybe follow along and do the same painting. I can't tell you exactly which colors I'm using because it is way too time consuming to check that for each video I'm doing. Um, so please forgive me that, but I think it's not so important which exact paints I'm using. It's uh, more important is the process. I know that this yellow is the Naples yellow that I'm using because it's one of my favorite colors. I really love it. It's not a transparent watercolor, but it's so beautiful and it works perfectly with the violet. This painting is also one of the art pieces I um, have available over at the Design Tank. You can get this as a canvas print in different sizes. I will give you a link to my store over at the Design Tank so you can check that out. They also have a wonderful other artist featured, for example Tracy Verdugo or Tamara Laporte. The paper that I'm working on is 100% cotton watercolor paper. Um, I think in my last video I did the one on the right side. I will link that up in the upper right corner and you can check that out if you haven't already. 
And I believe I talked a bit about the paper last time. I really prefer 100% cotton paper because it's so much more easy to work on that paper in comparison to a cheap paper. But of course it's very expensive and when you just play and experiment um, I would recommend using a cheap paper because if you use that expensive paper you will be so intimidated by it and blocked to loosen up your style so I always would recommend starting with a cheaper paper and when you feel more safe about the process then go to the cotton watercolor paper. As always I'm wetting the background to let the flowers bleed into it. That makes it more interesting. And always keep in mind to leave some of the white. That's really important. The greenish blue color I'm using here for the leaves, I believe it's a mix um, of the Van Gogh dust green and the ultramarine blue. I love those two colors mixed together. It's a super nice and interesting color. And I believe also the violet I've used is the dusk violet from Van Gogh. If you're interested in the watercolor palette I am most of the time using, I have a video for that also linked up in the upper right corner and there you can watch me setting up the palette and I also talk a little bit about the paints and the reasons why I'm using them. I am so sorry that the camera makes the painting so light sometimes. I think it catches my brush um, in the focus or in the measurement area and then it just um, brightens everything up. While everything is still wet I go in with the water soluble graphite. I believe it's an 8B. It's a really uh, soft pencil. It's from Faber-Castell and I just used these because I don't have tested any others and I have these and they are really nice. So um, I got asked which brand I'm using and that's just because I got those. I believe there should not be much difference between the different brands. When I'm going in with the water soluble pencils I always make different lines, thinner and thicker ones, that makes it also more interesting and not so stiff. During the process there is always a point where I'm not happy with the painting and that's totally normal. That's, um, I believe, almost every watercolor artist knows about that. There are stages during the process where the painting looks ugly and looks flat and looks boring. But don't go crazy about that, just keep on working. And here you see, after I add the contour lines to the flower's leaves or petals, um, it starts looking more vibrant and lively and interesting and less flat. As the painting is almost dry, I dip the nib of the pencil into water so I get that intense pigment.
and this part is my favorite of the whole process because I love playing um, with my painting I love adding details and sometimes I tend to overdo it but I think that doesn't matter every process is a learning process and with every time you paint you will get better I always use the same color I've used for my main images on the background in a blurry way just to give the impression of some flowers that are far behind the whole painting. I also always have a mix between the wet and wet technique and the wet and dry technique because I think it gives you more dimension when you have some of these um, well blended areas against harder lines. That makes everything also more interesting. And sometimes when I think my lines are too hard, I go in with the wet brush and just blend those out. What I did here is also something you have to be a little bit brave. Add in this intense red is um, a step that can maybe ruin the painting or take it in an area or in a, in a way you don't like it anymore. But I think here it makes everything pop and I think it was the right decision to go in with the red. I also intensify the centers of the flowers a little bit more um, so they work better with the in intense red. It's just playing here. It's something that you learn over time and that there you develop your style, I think, but you have to do it. So um, I think some people want to paint and they are afraid they can't do it and that the painting will not look good but if you never start you will never become better so I recommend just start and just play To finish up the painting I'm adding some color splatters when everything is dry. That makes it look even more interesting and I love the texture you get. And that's my finished painting for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you will see us next time. Bye!